you talk about it, top player Park. John Cabbage has been knocking on more doors than the postman. Yeah, well, he's, uh, Cabbage is probably one of the sorry, Cabbage is uh, <laughs> one of the best tournament players in Europe and one of the worst dice players. <laughs> I think it'd be more, way more fun if you ask him about the dice because we all know about the poker. He's won uh, huge titles in England, France, a whole lot. And this time last year, he came really, really close to the bracelet. And uh, I was drinking with him afterwards. I mean, uh, you know, he says he's in it for the, for the money. Don't believe him. I mean, he, he was gutted. <laughs> and the money had nothing at all to do with it. Well, last year he missed out by a hair and a whisker on the World Series jewelry, but they can't keep him down for much longer. Please welcome John Cabbage. I gotta talk about the almost bracelet last year first. I mean, you flew in from England, jumped right in 3,000 no limit, and I mean, three days later it was like that. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was for the first time I've actually decided to come late to the World Series, so I'll be fresh. And uh, I was struggling as well at the time, and uh, tried to you know, achieve the dream, and it didn't it got that close, but. Um, it was down to you and Ram. You guys are best of friends yeah, and another that, guy. Yeah, it was really strange to be to be there and, and Ram was still in. So it was like, uh, you know, I, the only thing on my mind was to win. And obviously Ram was there and he had his, his gang with him and obviously they wanted him to win. But uh, I stayed focused and I wasn't, you know, thinking about him and I was just thinking about myself and, and hit the crossbar. But didn't happen but and it was like one of the was, I think it was the first three-day event of the, of the minor yeah it was uh, it, played like four in the morning yeah it was uh, it was a record for the World Series yeah. they'd never gone to day three and uh, basically after day two uh, the camera crew were, <laughs> were tired and they said they had enough and they had like rules and regulations and they said we've got to stop filming for the day well they fit in perfectly at the World Series <laughs> yeah um, so they said well you can carry on playing but it might not be shown on TV. So we took the option of, of coming back the next day, basically, which was probably a mistake. Well, I mean, you know, you know, a lot of people in America haven't seen your face on TV, but in Europe, everybody knows who you are. You, you've, you've been around, you're a young guy, but you've actually come up kind of the hard way. You've been making your living at poker for years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm quite happy that way that nobody sort of knows who I am. It, it, it doesn't bother me that people know who you are or, who, or don't know who you are. It's like, as long as I get the money, then that's all that matters. <laughs> you were telling me a story, and you were in Dublin one time at a, the final of, a, of the Omaha event. <laughs> yeah. Was, was it Roy yeah. Brindley or something? Roy Brindley, yeah, who's like the new... I was in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, up-and-coming player. Do we and have he's, to mention it? <laughs> and he sort of, you know, we, we finished heads up, and he didn't know who I was, and I didn't know who he was, and... Uh, you know, he, he asked me who I was, and I just said my name was John, and that was it. And <laughs> and then he offered me a, you know, a real bad deal, and I just looked at him and said, you know, sorry, mate, but I know what I'm doing, and uh, I don't want to do any deal with you. you know, <laughs> I'd rather play. What but do you mean you know what you're doing? You knocked me out of that. That's right. Porik was in that final. It was all Do you want me to tell you? Porik was in that final. Yeah, I remember that. But it was great to to be in a situation where. Four or five years ago, if someone had said to me, well, who are you? I'd have been probably upset. But now it's like things have changed and that really didn't bother me because I actually liked the situation that he didn't know who I was. It was, it was Omaha. I mean, Omaha yeah. is... Uh, Which is know, my favorite game, for a long yeah. time. I mean, yesterday you were in the middle of that 5,000 pot yeah. limit Omaha. And, uh, did the guys impress you, the Americans? Uh, as usual, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, I had quite a tough table. There was... There was two Americans on my table. The rest were Europeans. So well, that was a bit unlucky. Yeah, it was sort of usual pot limit Omaha tournaments in Vegas. They're usually full of Europeans. Um, but it was it was tough. But it was good fun. Uh, but you could see the Americans were a little bit behind. You know, just because I mean the Europeans are playing the Omaha so much. Or? Well, because there was good Omaha players from Europe. You know, we had some tough competitors, and the Americans were sort of trying to bully them and and. It wasn't working, you know, when you've got people like Ziggy, you know, from Austria, and, you know, when he's in a pot, he's got a hand, you know, and you can't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy's in a pot without a hand, yeah. I want to see it. And, and, and a couple of the guys are just trying to make moves, and, you know, if they, if, if they knew Ziggy, they wouldn't do these plays, but obviously. I tried would, it once, I'll never do it again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you learn your lesson with certain European players at Potlim at Omaha, and, and you just have to make sure you, know, you don't forget who they are, because you know that when they're in a the pot, they've got a hand. 
What, what, what do you think of this day when you when you look at a schedule? I mean, now you're a sponsored player. You're with Noble Poker. You're playing more in America, aren't you? Is that yeah. is that because of the money or the exposure? Well, no, they, they they want the exposure in America, which is where you know all the big action is and where all the big money is, and you know every event now is a million dollars. So that's where you want to be. You know, in Europe, unfortunately, it's it's still good in Europe, but it's not as big. You know, the the big money now is in America. So and obviously the internet is very big in America because poker is like a hobby in America. So my site now is concentrating on on America. So my my money is in America. <laughs> I've got to get yeah. it back. I mean, they've tried you, they've, they've, they've tried Europe for a couple of years, and it just it's not happening. And I think they know that in America it can happen because the the players are there. Uh, they, they they labeled you like the fifth Hendon mobster for a while because you're, yeah. you're great buddies with Ram Vaswani and Joe Beavers like and all. Pete Best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I've always been single-minded, and I've always been doing my own thing. And at the time, they were you know I'd have probably got in if I'd have really pushed it, but. I've always wanted to be individual and I've always just stayed that way. Even when I went to Noble, I went as a team, but you know, within six months I was individual because that's what I want. I don't want to be playing for a team, I want to be playing for myself. So what's the plan for the rest of the world? So you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you know, if, you know, if, if it doesn't go well, then I take all the, the stick. If it goes well, then I get it all. So it works both ways, but I just didn't want to be... I'm quite a selfish person and I was quite happy to be on my own. So. What do you think it's going to take uh, for you to make that, that, that next leap? Is it, is it the bracelet? Is it a title? Or what, are, what are you looking for here at the World Series? Or are you happy to go home with money? I'm just happy to go home in front, yeah. yeah. If I make money, I don't care about you know, winning or you know, tournaments. It's just, if I win a tournament, it's a bonus. and I'll, you know, I'm, I'm here to win a tournament, and I will try. But if I don't, it's not the end of the world. Certainly now, where the fields are you know, 1,000, 2,000, 600, you know, it's like a lottery you know you spent a, a lot of time i mean you're a big traveler you played all over yeah. the world you, you were one of the first players just uh, english players spent a lot of time playing in russia weren't you yeah yeah i, I first hit the scene in moscow a few years ago and really enjoyed myself there yeah. <laughs> i mean it's a pretty it's any poker <laughs> yeah, a little bit not much uh, i was doing a lot of drinking a lot of partying and enjoying the town and but the poker was good too and it was a good attraction to go there and, and have great games and great fun too because it was for me, it was, you know, I've been all over the world playing poker, and it pretty much, it's always the same thing, you know, it's hotel rooms and casinos. But when I went to Moscow, it was I suddenly got out and I suddenly did things, which was nice. But you didn't have a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually got to see the city, which yeah. you know I've been all over the world and I don't see the city. I always just see the the, the, the card room. For once, I actually got out and went to visit and, and you know and, and travelled a little bit, and and I actually really liked it. So. What, what do you think about Vegas? I mean, do you have a good time when you're here, or is it all business? Uh, Vegas used to be a good time, but now it's like this is, is my tenth year, and it's, it's I don't get that adrenaline rush anymore. It's more just coming here and just. That's it. You stop playing the dice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've quit dice, so I don't get that ad rush you anymore. You still have it? Yeah, I'm doing good now. Wow, that's good, great. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so. I wish yeah. I'd taken it up so I could give it up. Yeah, well, I think once once I got married and. You know, I have a son and stuff. Dice just became something that I had to get out of my system, which I did. So. I mean, I mean, that's obviously something a lot of poker players struggle with. I mean, you, you learn the hard way. Well, you, you know, you get into poker through gambling. You know, generally people who play poker have gambled somewhere, in, uh, you know, in their life somewhere, something or other, horses or whatever. And I was the same. I was gambling, and I got into poker and. Uh, you know, once you're a gambler, you're always a gambler. So for you now, it's just it's, it's just concentrate on the poker. Yeah, once I got married and sort of matured and grew up a little bit and got all the all that stuff out of my system, now I understand that money is important. Before, money didn't mean nothing to me. Money was just a tool. So, but now money is more than a tool. It's like you have to live and you have to look after your family. So, I've managed to get it out of my system. Who in uh, who in poker impresses you? I mean, who who are there any guys that you? Are intimidated sitting at the table across from them. You play with everybody now. I'm not. I don't. No one intimidates me. Um, there's not too many players, but I like people like Daniel Negrano. He, you know, he's a, he's a good kid, and he, he he seems like a a happy, cheerful guy. You know, he's happy when he's losing, and he's happy when he's winning. He's, he always seems to be the same, and he seems to be a very nice kid off the the poker table. And he's obviously a winner, but he, he's not a. You know, he's not a big head, and he, he, he seems like a very le level-headed guy, and that's why I like him because he's the same when he's losing as well, which well, is unusual. <laughs> what about 
What about the whole cash games? I mean, you, you for a long time, you made your money in cash games and you used that to fund your tournaments. Yeah. Do, do, do you think a, a poker player has to even be able to beat a cash game these days? Or are too many people coming up that don't even know how? Well, I think uh, the way the tournament circuit is going, you know, if, if, if you're rich, if you're very wealthy, I think you can survive. If not, you're not going to survive. You know, you're, you're traveling, you're playing events every day and you know you're there for two weeks you play 15 events if you don't get a result you know it's you're gonna go broke so it, it's for me it's very difficult to make a living playing tournaments I think it's like impossible I think now it's even more important because the the buy-ins are so big I mean the rewards yeah, are huge but the you, rewards got, you, you are gotta huge. be able to keep pumping yeah. money in before you, you know, every time you go you away now it's, it's five thousand ten thousand it's just which right. is I mean the guys that are going to be around in five or ten years time are going to be the guys uh, who got lucky early and won a big yeah. tournament and can keep playing the and tournament just, just keep that. feeding off the one tournament but are, yeah. are the guys that can play both I mean so you can use the cash games both to uh, both to live off and to, and to fund uh, the pops at the, at the big touches yeah I mean I've got a good method if I don't win the money in the cash game then I don't play the tournament. It's just simple as that. It's like if I don't make the money, then you just don't play. You know, you sit by the pool, or you just wait for the next. You know, I don't play because I've done that before, where I just keep putting my last money into tournaments, and you know, you just can't keep doing that because you know, there's a tournament every day, there's a million dollar tournament every week. It's you know, you, yeah. you, you could go crazy just keep finding the money to play these tournaments. You know, and, and like Porik said, if you happen to win one, then then fair enough, then you can survive for the next. You know, maybe two years, or you know, maybe not even not as long as two years. It, you know, it depends how many tournaments you want to play. But if 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 you can't play cash games, then you better have a good bankroll to play tournaments because uh, unless you're very good, you're not going to survive. You want a tip? We've been following him for years. May have been the crossbar, but open goal soon. Two thousand to one. I saw the odds. We'll be back with more. You're watching the Poker Show.